We are Team Palindromes, and my name is Taylor Dice, and I'm the project lead. My name is Andrew Alexander, and I am the software lead for this project. My name is Emily Dennison, and I am the hardware lead of this project. My name is Benjamin Richards, and I am the implementation lead. I'm Jonathan Holgi, and I'm the research lead for this project. For our senior design project, we are dealing with synthetic aperture radar devices. We are planning on making improvements from the past semester's teams that they have done. For our long-term goal on the radar device, we are trying to make it capable of flying on a flight device that will allow for terrain mapping or collision avoidance. Our goal for the project is to improve mobility of, of the radar device. We will do this by replacing all the wired connections that deal with the communication and supplying power. This video will describe the design process and the results that we achieved. When we first started the project, as we mentioned before, we are trying to improve the mobility of the radar system. The radar right now is powered through a regular wall outlet connection as well as the Arduino to perform the test. Another improvement that we are trying to make for the project is change the wire connection from the radar to the computer which is wired right now with an RS-232 USB uh, connection and we're going to replace it with transceivers to make the connection wireless. And the other thing that we're going to improve is the antenna that's on the radar right now, which is a regular horn antenna, and we're going to use a more discrete and dynamic antenna. To implement the wireless transmission part of, a, of our project, you first must realize there are two systems to this SAR system. First, there is the radar, and then there's the linear rail. The linear rail is control, controlled by our Arduino and it requires a connection to the computer. But since the linear rail is a testing apparatus for the radar, we decided to not make it wireless. So to make the radar system wireless, we, just, we wanted three things. We wanted the long, capable of long transmissions, a discrete and capable of high transmission rates. So in our research, we came across the uh, Zigsby devices and when we, we decided to go with the Zigsby, and there are several different models, and the one we picked out is, as you can see, it is a Digi Zigsby RS-232 RF device that operates at 2.4 gigahertz. So once we decided those, we ordered them, and we started installing them. And we, you need two devices to transmit and receive between the computer and the radar. As you can see, it, the one that is connected to the radar just uses the RS-232 cable. The one that is connected to the computer uses the RS-232 to USB device. The idea behind these transceivers is that they are a serial cable replacement and operate transparently, meaning that the user does not have to do any kind of software implementation to control the devices. So they're a plug and play device. And with that, those installed, and when we match the specifications to the radar, they became transparent and we achieved wireless operation. As we mentioned, the goal of our, our project is to make the system mobile. To do that, we needed to provide power to the systems without requiring a plug to a wall outlet. So the two systems that we've decided to provide wireless power to are the radar system itself, as well as the transceiver to perform communication. To do this, we ordered a 12 volt power supply, which we designed a parallel harness for. This way, both devices are able to be powered at once. Wired operation is still an option, though it only requires one outlet now, um, as the battery is allowed to charge while operation is being performed. As we've mentioned, the end goal for our device is to be used on a flight-capable system. Because of that, we want to replace this heavy horn antenna with a more lightweight and discrete option that won't hinder or throw off the balance of the flight. So we want to design and replace that antenna with a microstrip antenna. This is an example of a microstrip antenna. However, our design will be much smaller because it's for a higher frequency and the size of the antenna is dependent upon the wavelength. This antenna is for 5.8 gigahertz and our design operates at 24.75 gigahertz. The design goal for our new antenna was to replicate the shape of a horn antenna's radiation pattern so that the scanning capability was not compromised but the footprint of the actual antenna was much smaller. To do this, we used a tool in HFSS to create a baseline antenna, which we added a microstrip feed to so that power could be supplied from the radar controller board via an SMA connector. 
We then adjusted the scaling and the positioning of elements so that the antenna could radiate power at the radar operating frequency. This is the resulting radiation pattern from our design. As expected, the gain is not as high as that of the horn antenna, but the gain parameters can be modified in the post-processing of data, and high fidelity results can still be achieved with our design. You can see we are now conducting a scan with the radar device. The radar system is now a wireless system because, because of the transceivers, right? As you can see, connected to the radar here. The radar and the transceiver are also being powered by our power supply we installed for the, the reason of eliminating a wire connection. If you look closely, the only wire connection we have is through this Arduino that is controlling the linear rail system. So well now we have wireless transmission and a wire, uh, power supply. So this whole radar system is wireless, which was our goal. This is a photo of the target field that we used to compare the scanning results of the before and after we made our changes to the system. The scanning range is approximately 25 feet downrange and 4 feet across, so all of the targets were placed inside this field. One middle rail target was placed at 20 feet downrange and slightly to the left of the center of the radar scanning field. This is the resulting 2D color map from the scan of the target field before we made our wireless upgrades. As you can see, an object was detected at 20 feet downrange and slightly to the left. The radar, as we received it, is able to output a color map that is faithful to the target field scan. This is the result of, a, of the scan of the same target field, but with the data transmission being handled wirelessly through the RF transceivers. Also, the radar and transceiver is being powered by the battery supply that we implemented. The two scans are almost indistinguishable, proving that making this operation wireless has not cost the system anything in terms of scanning capability. In conclusion, we consider our project a success as we have achieved our goal of transitioning to wireless radar operation.